My friends, throughout this week, we have been meditating on the love and mercy of God, and today's scriptures, especially in our responsorial psalm from Psalm 36. I have often wondered how St. Paul did it and how St. Peter did it. What gave them the gall to stand in front of their family and friends and total strangers and say, follow Jesus and follow my example? St. Peter, who had one of the most epic fails in history, denying the Lord that he knew him three times, in the words of a song from the 80s, leaving the Lord just when he needed him most. And St. Paul dedicated his life to wiping the name of Jesus Christ off the face of the earth. How could they possibly stand with such epic failure and with such epic sin and proclaim Christ as risen from the dead? They could do that because, as we heard so beautifully proclaimed in our gospel reading, they knew the power of Jesus Christ. They knew the love of Jesus Christ. St. Peter had encountered God made visible in Jesus Christ, and he witnessed his love for everyone, and including Peter, when the Lord three times said to Peter, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Erasing the sin of his denial. And St. Paul, once he encountered the risen life, risen life of Christ, his life and the life of the world was changed to the core. So these two epic sinners could become the rock upon which, which the Lord built his church and the apostle to the nations because they knew and they experienced that the love of God was far greater even than their epic sin. No matter what sin you carry in your life, the Lord's love and mercy is infinitely greater. One of the great instruments of love and mercy at Catholic TV was Monsignor Frank McFarland. This week we are remembering him on the 19th anniversary of his passing to the Lord. I had a memorable confession about 25 years ago when I went to Arch Street in Boston to go to confession. And as I was entering, entering the confessional chapel, out comes Monsignor McFarland from going to confession. Now, as Jay Fadden said in the tribute to Monsignor McFarland, he was one of the most best known people in all of New England. And here he was looking at me. And I thought to myself, Oh no, Frank knows I'm a sinner. And he looked at me and he said, isn't it wonderful to see a priest going to confession? He turned it around for me with words of encouragement. So today I would like to take the encouragement of Monsignor McFarlane and give it to you. We have spoken a lot about the Eucharistic fast during this pandemic how we long for the Eucharist, but we cannot go to the Eucharist because of protocols and because of safety. Well, many of us have an equal, equal longing for the gift of reconciliation. And this is what Pope Francis has to say about us who long for the sacrament of reconciliation during this pandemic. Pope Francis speaking now. It is very clear if you cannot find a priest to confess to, speak directly to God, your Father, and tell him the truth. Say, Lord, I did this, 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 this. Forgive me and ask for pardon with all your heart. Make an act of contrition and promise God, I will go to confession afterwards, but forgive me now and immediately you return to the state of grace of God with you. My friends, this entire week, every day of his life, our Lord has encouraged us to embrace his love and mercy. And today we do so 
humbly and gratefully.